issue of the facilities committee and we'll go right to the meeting July 10th at 8 o'clock. We'll go right to the agenda and uh, open it for discussion with the executive director. There are a total of uh, five items on the agenda for today, uh, including uh, one other subject matter uh, where the carpet was brought down today. But the first one up is the minimum bid amount, which you see on page two. Uh, we put our surplus property out to bid uh, with the minimum bids that we had approved by this committee and then also the board uh, last time we received no bids. Uh, therefore, we're recommending to reduce the minimum bids to what you see before you and uh, go out for a second round of bids on the surplus property. We had no bids, were there any inquiries? Yes, I, I looked, I asked everybody, you know, I wasn't always down there, but I think there was five or six people that came through. They, they looked at, a couple people looked at the generator, which is for the engine part, and then uh, four people looked at all the trucks. So, I, you know, that's kind of normal interest. A lot of times people didn't come in and just pull a number out Set the minimum bids. They're kind of close to what I figure uh, salary is going to be there. I didn't want to go lower than that. I didn't want to. I, I think if no one does it again, we could probably make that amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. On the on the plow, you know, it says it runs eighty grand. If you get nothing, is, uh, is there any thought process to still use it as a backup? For I sure? can't. No, just uh, there's too many issues. You know, say as far as liability. Okay. I mean, right. what I'm it says can be driven. If does somebody else okay. wants to take that and bring it back up to you okay. know, that's kind of we even thought of just using it on site. And we can't use it even on site on a four without well, worrying about. Let's something. ask a dollar amount or a dollar amount to make it uh, usable again. Yeah, thousand I imagine, dollars. I imagine it's like huh? yeah, it's about five to five hundred thousand dollars for some of those things like that. So they don't meet the state requirements of the fuel controls or anything. Spend money on trying to fix it because the state don't want them on the road ahead. Yeah, good point. It wouldn't even be part of the It wouldn't even fit the requirements. Right. And unsafe. Uh, the complete body is rotted. The floor where your feet go, there's nothing there but the floorboard is, or the rubber mat. Of course, the rubber mat don't rust. So, I, you know. You seem to do what I did back in college. Yeah, I did that too. <laughs> I used to go to the journal. I used to go to the journal and get the metal there and put the newspaper ads down on the floor. I mean, and take them in. I would uh, I would recommend that uh, Steve go ahead with the bids and uh, I'd like to say that you know maybe it's here. And I just want to make sure that when we sell these things and bid them out, is that they know it's as is. Yeah, I think I said something up here. Is that the line. top? For three, three, cash on uh, as is and where is. We, okay. You, All right. I you see it there. insisted on that a couple years ago. Yeah. yeah. I just, you know, looking at it yesterday there, and I'm not supposed to make any decisions with that. So, yes. So, if you get no bids again, what's the next salvage, step? We, we could salvage it. We'll, so okay. So, there's another plan. Yeah. To we try to figure it. The only issue we get into that. I think you're more for the metal than you. Yeah. The only yeah. issue we get is. Uh, if the salvage yard will come and get it and take the money, <coughs> we've got to take it there. Somebody's got to pay somebody for a whole boy or whatever. Cut the <coughs> but as far as the, the plow, I just don't understand why there's two plows on there that you got to pick up. Really, to me, they're worth five, six hundred. That's why I set that a little higher there. But maybe we'll get more uh, word of mouth out there and uh, have people come and buy. Well, this is snow plowing season right now. <laughs> Middle of July up here, but maybe we're farther yeah, along. Yeah, maybe we get a little closer to it. Good time to use it. Oh, hold on. I'll make that motion. I wish you made to approve the bids. Seconded by Don. And we move to the full board. The next one is the next item is over on page uh, three. This is the first of the more specifically. Thank you. 
know, it's funny how you, I'm trying to think how you judge quality sometimes, the way I want to think of it. The intermaking of the machinery, the uh, quality of the motor, obviously, I think it's about the motor, the hydraulics, and so forth, whatever. But one of the things that kind of got me a little bit was the weight. And, and weight tells me there's metal in it, and it has a different level of stability. Have we driven any of these other mowers? Do we have any idea what the driving capabilities are other than the specifications? No. Because I look at a mower that's uh, the Toro. I mean, it's 4,100 pounds, and the weight of the Jacobson is 3,400 pounds. I mean, that's 700 pounds of something. Yeah, I look at the other you know, I mean, I look at vibration, yeah. I look at. But uh, from my construction experience, weight, lighter weight, That might be a good question for the big people maybe. But I know a lot of fiberglass that you yeah. saw when that went yeah. up. I, I, I really think, you know, I, mean, I have two thoughts here. Number one is, um, would I go buy a car without driving it? Would I buy a thirty, forty thousand dollar car without driving it? Well, uh, obviously that's, I would. And I don't think anybody would seem to deny that fact or whatever. So we, we're buying more against the competition that we haven't driven the other malls. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now the question is, we know what the Jacobson does. Is the model you really want to select is something that makes sense to you because that's what you've driven and you're happy with it. Now, of course, I'll back up the other argument is I bought a Cadillac and I enjoy my Cadillac, guess what, I don't need to drive any other vehicles because I'm enjoying driving the Cadillac. But, I haven't driven a Jaguar or, or a Mercedes or something, I really don't know what a Mercedes does or what it feels like, because all I know is what the Cadillac does. And I know that because I didn't know what a Mercedes did until I drove my daughters. <laughs> you see, so, so those are the things that, uh, I don't know where you can go drive one, or oh, what I'm you sure feel. They don't, they don't. You have to go, Albany would be for wrestling. Yeah. John Deere, I, I got that out of uh, the Virgin Creek. I don't know if they've got one in stock. Mm -hmm. you know, but I, they probably put you on it somewhere and you can just go. And, uh, what, what did we have before the Jacobson? We had those play uh, on We, oh, bought, yeah, we oh. buy a, we still have them, those tractors. The tractors we buy a New Holland them. tractor and yeah. put them just like they do on the side of the road. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what we're using now. Just Well, I'm going to ask a second question in regards, and there might be a little bit different than that one. What would two mowers, in regards to a different size, make a difference for you? In other words, if you're going to spend, what are we looking at, 40000 50, 50000 What if we bought two smaller size lawn mowers that were 25000 30000 Okay, that and probably the deck size would be probably bigger than that uh, size of one you think of. Would two of those be better for you as far as that one here, one there? Because you have a big one that I'm not sure what your transportation issues are to get them from here to there. We can handle it. We've got trailers that we can. Okay. We can. Um, the issue I think when you drop down, I look at that, and when you drop down, and considering you're going to use another person, It doesn't feel right, but put it that way. That, that yeah, if for example, say nothing happened to that one, and then this discussion is happening during budget time, yeah. we were ordering another one. Yeah. Um, it's great to have a, a unit backup, but also you can leave it out there with, like, for example, we were thinking the old Jacobson in Sora, you leave it at the airport, and Darren would run that out there as a mower instead of, we're, right now we're using. My observation, and not to be critical of what, what the issues are and how things are done, but when I, when I see an employee on a 42-inch lawnmower trying to mow two acres of land, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Sure. A lot of that, yeah, well, some of it's the finish. I mean, it's the board. 
No, no, I mean, you're talking about big fields, the amount of big fields around the mole, a big area with a small volume. Right. Yeah, well, it's not what I'm saying you. is, what okay. I'm saying is, okay, I don't know, I don't know what you need or what you don't need, okay, but okay. I'm just saying what, what I observe, what I observe is, okay, is using manpower versus machine power, okay, you use a lot of manpower to provide a, a service where the machine power, the time that you spend the machine to save, will make a huge difference. So what I'm saying to you is, if you had two molars of a little bit smaller size of value, whatever, would that create a whole different element of the way you do things, whatever, because you have, obviously you've got these guys in the motor, you've got two motors, but why would I put one guy on a little small motor when I could put two guys on two bigger motors? Just let me go back 10 yeah. years years when I came okay. here, there were no variety motors. Okay. We would take six kids, because I have some friends when we went around, we'd take six kids up front, and you'd see six of them in a line, almost an ad for a plural, and, and they mowed everything by hand. And the reason I was told why they didn't buy a variety motor is because the employees were taking the variety along and were home on the weekend. So they got rid of it. And, and all that was a matter of Buying Agway molars, and then, so we, we we started up. So we got away from that with the John Deere, but that was kind of that was the board. You know, I, I'm a lot of it is I'm going with what you'd like to see, and if that's what you'd like to see now, or what you see there is a lot of what was done in the past, and, and what I understand the board wanting, what what what's to be mowed, how it's to look, and things like that. So um, that's kind of where you know when you see we're riding lawnmowers. And You know, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying if, if that's what you know, you think would uh, be a good solution to that. No, it's your headache. What, it's your headache. No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying what, what you what, see. Yeah. Yeah, what I see is what you're what is two people see, here's, riding. Here's, here's what I ask. Here's what I ask because this is a whole, whole overall presentation issue here. It isn't about mowing grass. It's about presentation. Because when you have a building that looks this way, whatever, I don't have this, whatever, I mean, I have grass. Grass is a presentation thing because grass takes maintenance. It's always going. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a definite example of scheduling, planning, and doing type of things, whatever. So, because it's easy to observe. Okay, nobody knows what your plumbing system's doing at the time, but they do see what your grass is doing, how the trimming is, all those type of things. So all I'm saying is, okay, in our level of presentation, are we really satisfied the way we present our lawns and grasses to the public? That's what that's what really was here. I mean, it's a lawn where we're looking at. We're also looking at all those things that obviously gives you the product that you want for everybody, because that represents us. The grass and what it looks like tells you what we're doing. Right, that's what I mean, it's a simple little thing. It's like how you plow, how you think. Those things are observable. So now. I'm asking our organization here, are we satisfied the way we present ourselves and we maintain the grass here? So is a big mower take care of the volume? Yes. Does it really do all the things, okay, and other type of things that we're doing that really satisfy the presentation factor of who we are? You have a huge responsibility for things that you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even want to think about what you do for the courts or that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that would uh, make the labor look more time. Uh, on this paper here, and I did some cost, uh, how much it's costing uh, a mobile arrangement. Uh, and I agreed it's four times because it would take two guys for the same amount. So one guy is going to mow half as much. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was about four times. I said the fuel will probably go up about half again because it wouldn't. They wouldn't get half. They wouldn't use half the fuel for each one, so they'd use less. That would probably go up about fifty percent, depreciate fifty percent. I think it'd be about seven dollars a year uh, to mow the two slightly smaller mowers. That'd be just a guess, but that's something to consider. 
financial efficiency. That's that's my guess. Well, in fact, I, I don't disagree with any of those any of those thoughts. I, I know exactly what you're saying, and I know exactly what you're thinking. About. All, all I want all I want to present here is that is I know we had this mower, and this is the way we've been doing things. But sometimes you say to yourself, "Oh, things changed." Now I have the opportunity here to rethink this process. Oh, it's been going okay with this big bore. Is it better than it used to be? Probably has to be with this big bore that you've had. It's okay. like been a luxury. But now all of a sudden you say to yourself, all right, here I am. I've got this big bore. Well, it's, some things are good about it. Some things are bad about it. This is my chance, okay? I get a new something, <coughs> whatever. But what do I really want? What does really make sense so I can negate my presentation of it. Okay. You see, so I, no, that's I all right where you're going now. Yeah, so, so, so that's what I need to be totally comfortable with what you're saying. I would say um, if we could get the jigs from the whatever mold we pick and we could go up a level above the riding mower or the rider, something maybe in 72 or 96 inch finish mower. Okay. Then so you have two people, but you've got the one big one to take care of both. Smaller, I think I priced a couple of them in the 14, 15,000 range. You've seen them, and uh, they've got an eight foot deck, but they can get in around buildings and things, and they can do this in no time. But that, you know, when I'm thinking about what I want, that would be a great thing. Well, and that's what we need to really think for. Really okay. Think. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why I think the way I think. It is, I ran a work program 27 years ago with nine kids at the site center. Nine kids, okay, we worked for coordinated with the grounds department, whatever. We had two riding lawnmowers, nine foot two push mowers, weed eaters, whatever. The grass never got any higher than that. It always looked like a golf course. I said, we're going, we're moving, we're moving. Now, manpower, it's cheap because we run a cheap GPA program, whatever, but, okay, so the presentation factor was this is the way it should look and can look, okay? Program dissolved grass was up to here, the weeds are up to here, okay, because you can't meet all those expectations because of whatever. So, so you ask yourself, what do I really like? You have a lawn, we all have lawns, okay, we look at it and say, what do I, what do I accept? My wife touches the grass, I don't even, I don't even get near the lawn, don't touch it. This is my, you know, okay, everything is done the way she wants it to look, okay, and it's really good. So we built a small, you know, whatever lot. So that, see, so that's what I'm asking us here at this point in time. It's a turnstile. You say this is what we could have and expect. Now, obviously, what Fred just said, at what cost? At what cost? Do we get something better than we have? At what cost? Now, if we spend more money and don't get a quality product that, okay, whatever, you say to yourself, well, I didn't go forward, I went backwards. So, you just said, you like what? And a what? And a medium size rider or medium above All right. Kind of now, there we go. Right. Now, there we go. So, so you, you kind of walk me through. Well, I, I just want to know what thinking. you want. Right. Oh, because no. this is all done and, about. And right. I guess sometimes, I mean, what, the reason I come to you, I try to work So, so we're all set with the Jacobs. That's the baby for us. But we also realize we need something else. Or I suggest this, but we uh, can forward that something else doesn't make sense. Yeah, sure. I, I think really yeah. we need to know okay. exactly, okay, because we're really starting over again. Sure. You've got a quality new motor and motor that you're gonna that you want. Okay? And then the next part is, ah, I really can do something better than I ever done before. I really think that this organization is, is really wants quality, okay? And that's what we expect here. And it's like, and if you're troubled by you can't get things done the way you want it to be, okay? That's what we want to do for you, and, and for all of us. No, you. It's it only is. grass, but it really. The board it really said this before, and it's important for the budget meeting last year. You said the same thing. Take more to heart. Like, uh, how I'm looking at things. Yeah. Okay. Well, before the, the tragedy 
we had come up here with Joe Moore, we're, we're talking about getting another more in it. <coughs> you know, when you look at the specs of it, the time production is 10.4 acres per hour. Since the mall and everything is the biggest, it's a four wheel drive. You want to see two wheel drive? Four wheel drive. Yeah. It goes 15 miles an hour. Yeah, well, two wheel. And if you put it in four wheel, you're yeah. supposed to be traveling eight point four. Yeah, it slows down to ten, eight or ten. Yeah, yeah. which would make sense. But in actuality, we're looking at a situation where we got to replace what we had, and this is what this is all about: replacing that one. And where we go in the future. But one of the things that you brought up that I didn't understand is we're using this mower at the airport. Yeah, we, we can. We don't. Because it's so busy here, but if, if we need it out there, we can we trailer it out there. We've done it once this year, just to, um, around the front, and uh, you know that they're on the roadway, and then where the old rodeo was, we don't we don't go way out around the runway. Yeah, we'll we'll mow we'll that area right in front, and that's more for presentation. We get a pretty good shot with it. When we use the flail, when the, the grass is too high, it starts bunching up. And acres we got here, according to the specs on this thing, you can mow it, you should be able to mow it in two days. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Well, the specs are right. Yeah. You yeah. believe the specs are right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I just took the Jacob from the summer and said, here's uh, two, two and a half days to do it all. Um, pretty much, we, 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 we have one cycle all done. Tell me about the, the containment one here where it's got the picture here where you've got, you know, so it's all enclosed. What, what's the deal? Oh, that was a tab for uh, weight access. You can get an enclosed tab and then you can, you can run it as a snowblower or a sweeper to attach it. Is that air conditioned? I I think you could get it. Well, I just wonder. I just imagine the, end of the tab a lot of times have those sliders on the sides of the air, but a lot of times you need to have more, you need more heat than more air conditioning because it's more because you're snow blowing or using uh, roadways. And that's not included? No, that's a separate pricing. We just wait out until we get that. To yeah, we didn't realize it when we were talking to Jacobson and Brett, but I mean, they said that it can also be used as a, as a sleeper. Uh, we didn't realize that until we had them doing a separate quote for this air conditioning purpose. But we already have a machine that does that.
that's on the other that's usable. Why wouldn't we keep them or put them on the new one and take these decks off the new one to work that out for insurance companies? Yeah, they say that if they own it, then they would have to buy back that, or they say you can keep the. the keep well, there's there certain decks out there that's not hurt. Right? Yeah, they're dead. Yeah. Go on, the, go right on this new machine that you're buying. Yeah, that's what they're. So you're talking about that, those ones where the, you see the. Yeah, the coal ups. They're interchangeable with the new ones. I think if they give us less, then I think those decks are out. If they say that they're over there salvageable, salvageable for four thousand dollars, and they only give us ten, I think the decks are out. But if they yeah. would be interchangeable, the guys go yeah, that out. I'm wondering if we should uh, agree on purchasing this machine for the option if we can replace our. They can buy it without these other decks. It's going to be a lot cheaper for us. I, I have. Huh? You got to buy the machine whole on the same contract. Are you are you saying just buy the the main part and interchange it on all of those? All straight yeah. contracts got to buy the whole. Yeah, that. Why is that? That's the way the state sets it up. They don't want people, you know, everybody coming and trying to make their own deal. See the state. So in other words, if we what you're telling me is we, if we had three good decks. That we couldn't buy just the main part of this machine? No, they offer that machine uh, under state contract. They could, but it would be under state contract. Yeah. Yeah. They, they wouldn't be under state contract. The machine would sell for that same amount. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, but you win three decks for it. But on this machine, you had to replace some of the arms. Yeah, some of the yeah those are all good replaced. Problems, and so they would be, uh, uh, they'd be great to bear. Yeah. Okay. But that's the other thing is, is I've, I've been doing a little research on these things, but I. I went out and I watched the city guys. I watched a few other guys. You know, running the top speed is not good for these machines. The other day I watched them right back in my house. They took the park, they took their little park. It's unbelievable. If that guy wouldn't have been with a seatbelt book, he'd have been out of there. That's right. The machine just leaped. His whole decks went up, come down, and then he pulled the water. So, you know, even though it can go and do all that stuff, you know, you're not on a you're not on a finished screen, that's for sure. What is the uh, maintenance record on this Jacob that you have? Do you have a manual or you know, yeah, a, a uh, log that keeps track of? Yeah, we service it. And then, you keep uh, that log, do we? Yeah, I keep it in a file there. I think I might grab the file. There, but he records like you know, hydraulic fluid changes and checks and things like that. But yeah. then we go through them. We go through them in late fall. So we've come to one conclusion, we're going to have a full-time employee running this machine? Uh, yes. 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 We're going to be properly trained? Yes. And we're going to have the company come up here and run through the machine with them, hours to be done after being used? Yes. We install uh, proper parts to assure the value of the machine. Yes. yes, we need a motion to approve the Jacobson employee. I'll make that motion. Tom's tank for sitting still. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, fellas. <laughs>
Ready for the next item? Yes, let's go. Okay. Um, over on page 21, there is, uh, this is uh, fencing at the port access road. Steve has a diagram which will pass out here uh, when we get back. But what this is, this is the part of the fence that wasn't uh, completed as uh, part of the port access road project. It uh, runs uh, parallel to Ford Street and then comes up to Ford Street beside the uh, uh, Sergeant's property. Uh, what we did is we uh, put the request out there. We, we received seven quotes, uh, as you can see the results there, <coughs> for 455 linear feet fence. Uh, total cost is $7,507.50, and that's uh, Rommel Fence. Did you say fence is there? Yes. Say Mike. Separately, because the port access road was uh, still in use, the temporary road was still in use and had not been removed at the time of the fencing was completed. So, therefore, it had stopped uh, at the top of its grade. Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying, it wasn't part of the original bit of the road. Was it was all the way up to that? Um, it was, and we actually received the credit for that. Temporary road was in that position in the area where the yellow is now, coming up to Fort Street. The other road over here on the other side wasn't done because we wasn't done the landscaping at the time. So, but this original yellow mark was in the original bid that the contractor did. And I want to make sure that that money was credited back to us that we're using that money. I'll get that. <coughs> Did we pay him for what he bid? Only no. now the contractor had to pay him for what he bid. Only what he installed. We paid him for what he bid. And what he bid. Well, but we didn't pay him. No. Well, that didn't be the process. The, originally, the fence was not at the top of the grade. The fence was back towards the property line. On, uh, right, we couldn't put it in it. So what we did is we moved it down to the top of the grade, and that made a lot less fence.
wish I recalled the, the exact amount of fence, but I'd say it was a thousand feet of fence and we only installed 800. We only did burn for so 800 feet. What was the original cost under the contract? What did we have to pay? Well, how much was it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I, I think that's what I, I think it might have been 28, 20, 29 dollars. Well, taking that into consideration, uh, they recommended that we take the low bid. Well, I, I look at the bids through here, whatever, and it's all about it's all about how they were charged for the man hours and yeah. the work done. Yeah. That's all it is. Everything else is. The one guy's giving you a one year warranty on labor and then then you go to the next couple and then yeah. you know, two years labor and five year material. I looked at that, I was interested in that because, you know, that tells me there's different types of fence that you may be using. Is that right? No. It's got to be, I, I gave them a year of data back. That's what they've got to So they're all boxed, they're all boxed with the material. It's short of time on warranty. Right. And that might be the individual, I mean, maybe someone says it has to match the state. That's what the manufacturer gives them a longer warranty. But the alloys and the metal are yeah. different. But there are those different gates and different metals up on right, but there is a minimum that we'll accept for right. the right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's always to accept. So they yeah. some could give you more they don't set the amount of standard. So most of this fence usually made in the United States or where does it come from? Do you know? Uh, until I see what they're gonna give me, I don't I don't know if they have specific. Because if you look on page twenty six, this guy's giving you twenty years. The difference between his bid and the lowest bid is who's the most responsible. Would you like a 20 year guarantee on it or one year? Bid 16, the contractor's bidding, you leave it wide open. So, you know, he wants to put in the, the most responsible bid to get the bid. So, if you look at 26, 20 year warranty and two years on labor, then you go back to the bid spec, what's the difference in price? in price versus what he's giving you for I'm a stickler on warranties. Yeah, I am. I don't want to see a fence falling apart two years from now and then we're stuck for another fence. No, a big big uh, it's a water bowl warranty which you ask for and we ask for you know, No, it's a it's a wide open bit. So, so to get the job, I'm going to put my best effort forward, and I'm going to give you a 20-year warranty on the material. So he must know that his fence that he's putting in is going to give you a 20-year warranty. It doesn't matter if it's 15 years old and you're going to get, it was 20000 when you put it in, you're going to get $6,000 now. See, I, I don't think that's valid on his part, because the manufacturer of the materials are all the same. Manufacturer tell you if it's a 20 year warranty, or whatever, unless he's unless he's overrating the warranty of what the yeah, manufacturer I says. Yeah, I the manufacturer says, I'm only going to get we only give a five year warranty. It's right. like a car, the car dealership says the manufacturer only gives you 50,000, but 
show says we'll give you a hundred thousand, that's fifty thousand, that's the show's responsibility. Well the materials are what they are, I mean he's that person is okay, I'm not sure they're if they're not in business in twenty years, who's here? That would be oh. the, that would be the issue. And you know, the material is yeah, yeah. Right. I mean I'll give you a fifty year warning, but I'm out of business next year. Well, that <laughs> still goes on the it's a material warranty is what you're looking at. Well yeah, but I'm just saying is but then it becomes your responsibility to replace it. Sure. I don't know. I don't really think that this type of material is deteriorating in 20 years. Do you have any material? Yeah, it's, it's all galvanized. I don't do that mess out there. I, yeah. I need some mess that fluffs up, but I think that's way back. You know, I think nowadays um, it's probably not worth anybody to put out some interior, either a homeowner or a labor. So these down. guys are way without the damage. Yeah. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think our old, this is one of our old residents. Yeah, that's from 1987 from the airport. Two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah. 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 Two years. You know, you think it could go like this year. It's full yeah. stuff at the moment. Yeah. This guy's guaranteed his labor. And then it, you know, you're talking. I think one of the things that. What are you talking? That Fred, Fred, one of the things that we mentioned there, whatever, is this uh, MWD uh, certified type of thing, whatever. How much does that impact here? Because they are the lowest bidder. They are providing the product. And they are providing the fence as spec. What do we look like if we don't take this effort? I think we would have to get it approved by the uh, yes, Fresh State Development. Uh, anytime that we don't take an MVP, we've got to pay us to have to put their stamp of approval on it. percentage impact of this of this contract? Would you want to get one percent off this for the uh, probably not one percent where we run into a problem. I mean, and Fred's got a very valid point. You got a warranty, you got all those type of things, you got price versus what uh, uh, ethical expectations that you have. And now we're put in a position here what do we do here? What do we really do? I mean, so it's not it should be really cut and dry, and all of a sudden it isn't becoming cut and dry. I mean it's like okay. Myself personally, because I've been faced with this issue whatever, that and, and Fred knows it knows the situation also because he served the chairman of the board. Those letters are directed back to me. They're back directed back to him. Say, hey, wait a minute, what are you what are you how are you directing your board to what it needs to do? And and it's like, well, I don't I can't tell my board what to do. I can present them to tell them what the expectation of what we're supposed to do. <coughs> and that's a really difficult situation to be in for us, for all of us. Um, I don't know. For me personally I would have a hard time going back to uh, to uh, Alfonso David and say to me, I mean, hey, Mr. Lamasha, I thought we had an understanding here of what you're supposed to do or not to do, okay? And I will now notify the governor's office that this is what's happening. Ah, I don't want, I don't really want that on my shoulder. I don't want, you wouldn't want it either. Well, it's good, and that's, that, that, this is a good thing to do that if we approve if you're approving the 7,000 because it's the minority end of it, and I'm saying that we should go with the most responsible bidder, which increases the price to $2,789, what is the issue we should do? As a board member, I feel we should get the best deal for the authority. And if a minority contract is not the best deal for the authority, then we should go with the one that's most responsible for the authority. But he is the lowest price. And that's yeah, he's got a one-year warranty on everything. 
The other people who've got a 20 year warranty with a two year labor yeah. warranty. No question about it. And, and it's an important thing because when you put this fence in and it starts falling down next year or stuff, you got no warranty after a year. I just happened to have that problem yesterday. It's like your car, you put extended warranties on everything. You want to make sure you've got the right thing. Well, I, I think with you know, that regards, I think this is send it back as a table from this committee here, put it back in the full board, and let them let it go. Well, no, but I'm just saying I wouldn't I wouldn't pass it to, to advise to anybody. You send them back and let them understand everything that's involved in making. Well, I think we should ask the question. Of these people that you're worried about, you want to get the letter from? Well, we can just with our procurement policy, the interaction with our procurement and our MWD policy is supposed to take the MWD here. However, there are exceptions in our procurement policy where we can take action if it's in the best interest of the authority. So if it's argued that uh, it's in the best interest of the authority to go with a longer warranty, that's our that's our avenue to go with the policy. So there is a choice here that can be made. But I think that that is the bias. But either I way, have, you're have still to going away. to have to send that in as a, as a so, waiver. Way. But the so we can actually, in the committee here today, we just kind of table this to get that one for you. Uh, Tell me. You can, yeah, you can send the waiver process. Mm -hmm. That's so all. It's supposed to take, it's supposed to be a short period of time. Yeah. Should be back in time. Specify why office. we're doing it. See what their response is. I would, I would feel comfortable with that. In the meantime, you can check and make sure why these guys are doing it. So. Okay, so that brings us to the second to last item over on page 30. This is a relocation of the security cameras at the port. Uh, with uh, truck scale uh, being removed, uh, we need to relocate the uh, cameras for uh, basically it's Coast Guard driving this, correct? to do that is $14,780 from NCC systems. And the Coast Guard is telling us to do this? Yes. Yeah, the monitor, all the monitors on the brains are at the old, uh, in the old office. And they weren't one of the ones to be scaled out. And when they came in this spring, they, they said who monitors, who monitors uh, these cameras Make a motion move to full board. I'll second. And last but not least, uh, this is a small item about uh, uh, I, <laughs> a small item, but because of the dollar amount, uh, does need to come before the committee of the board. This is a carpet installation in this, in this uh, building. Uh, Gardner's flooring is close to seven thousand. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had that since, uh, no, I think. Uh, 
Well, I mean, just ask. I mean, I'm sure sometimes the businesses are used to having a business, but the employee gave me. to the full board. 